Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. Busy morning this morning, but we're going to have an even busier weekend. It is homecoming weekend, and also it's the Montana Film Festival. So much going on. But let's talk about some of the weather um, that's going to be happening today and this weekend. Uh, currently, it's 37 degrees outside, a high of 54, a low of 38, with a 40% chance of showers happening tonight. So if you guys are planning on going on the Art Walk, you may want to uh, plan your route accordingly to avoid being out uh, too much in the rain. Saturday, you're going to have a 50% chance of rain because it always seems to rain at least once or twice during the homecoming um, week as well. So that's kind of uh, your weather look. And it looks like on Columbus Day or uh, in Missoula, it's Indigenous Peoples Day. Your high is going to be 54 and it's going to be a nice sunny day by Monday. Um, hey guys, let's talk about some news that are happening in and around. Uh, the couple th that were involved in the double homicide uh, will see trial uh, by jury this January. It's been more than a year since 15-year-old uh, Marilyn Pickett and 24-year-old Jackson Wills were found killed in the home of s in Strand Avenue. The crime scene, according to earlier reports, included three plastic tubs that contained the victim's body parts. Police um, also retrieved a machete, double-headed axe, a uh, serrated kitchen knife, and a steak knife. It took a c uh, the county coroner nearly a month to identify the through uh, DNA and dental records the uh, the identity of the victims. Uh, Augusta Augusta Standing Rock's trial was really originally set for November, but it was bumped up to January. They're collecting all the evidence and moving this forward as well. Standing Rock's co-defendant, 23-year-old Tiffany Pierce, is set to go to trial by March 1st. They are charged with two counts of deliberate homicide. They are both being held on a $2 million bail. For the second time in a year, a busload of Browning student athletes and coaches left a convenience store in the Flathead area last week feeling disrespected by the owner and management there. The Browning cross-country team approached Woody's uh, Country Store located in the Flathead Valley outside Kalispell at a junction of Highway 35 and 206 between Big Fork and Columbia Falls. The store's owner said he told the coach he had worries about the entire group of students in the store. According to uh, Jerry Rayson, um, football coach for the uh, uh, Browning team. The 2017 incident happened like this. He went into the first, followed by five football players who wanted some snacks to use the bathroom, just uh, stretched their legs also. And then one of their employees said, we, we can't handle every one of you. Um, smaller schools have uh, gone long distances to go to other schools. B and C schools like Browning uh, have a tendency to have four day school weeks um, so they can have the extra day to, for travel for some of their uh, but of course, Rayson, the football coach, said that he thinks that everyone should simply move on from this uh, this more recent incident. Also said he never had uh, an issue anywhere else in the state. Having a problem with their athletes being stopped or harassed is not being uh, and also is not being spiteful in any way. He said, "We're aware of the situation, and we're not the ones who have to live with it. They are." So far, Woody's Country Store issued an apology via their Facebook page. In national news, uh, the big thing that's happening today is that they're going to vote on whether or not to end the debate on Brett Kavanaugh's um, nomination for Supreme Court. Um, Key Republican senators who have been working um, withholding judgment on the nomination of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court amid allegations of sexual assault said that the supplemental inquiry by the FBI into the allegations was thorough. While not announcing how they would vote, they did not uh, signal further reservations about Kavanaugh. Senator Susan Collins, uh, Maine, Jeff Flake, Senator Lisa Murkowski and of Alaska were all undecided and wanted to see the NFI, uh, uh, in, uh, the FBI investigation through. Tennessee Republican Bob Corker, a Trump critic who is retiring, announced that he would vote for Kavanaugh regardless. Um, North Dakota Democrat uh, Heike uh, Hemkamp, facing a tough re-election battle in the conservative state, um, announced that she would oppose the nomination. But here's another kicker. Um, the, only a few of Dems and GOP members can even look at the FBI's report of Brett Kavanaugh. The debate, one, the debate once closed means that there's going to be a clock that starts ticking, which will give uh, senators 30 hours from that point to vote Kavanaugh into the Supreme Court or not. Uh, but of course, when Senator Jeff Flake uh, suggested that the price for his support will be um, a week-long pause to permit the investigation, Republican leaders had no choice but to agree. 
Democrats not only opposed Kavanaugh, but they also remain deeply embittered by the experience that closed out the tenure of President Barack Obama, Barack Obama when Mitch McConnell refused to schedule a vote on Obama's nominee for Supreme Court vacancy, up until the point where Trump eventually got to fill. Uh, that was eight months of the Supreme Court only having eight members. And, of course, uh, on Wednesday, I also mentioned that uh, the Supreme Court uh, can't necessarily function with eight members, which one uh, with half conservative, half liberal parties, it's very nonpartisan. Uh, Montana, uh, of course, here's another thing. Uh, back in Montana, Montana State Senator Steve Daines might not even be there to vote uh, for Kavanaugh because he's going to go to his daughter's wedding. Um, and the vote might be held over uh, Saturday to uh, match with Dane's schedule, who has decided to vote for Kavanaugh. Uh, debate will be closed this morning, and uh, Saturday will be the only date to vote for this nomination. So they're still going to vote for the nomination, but they're just going to figure out, uh, they're going to start wrapping up the debate today. So that's kind of what's happening with uh, the whole uh, Brett Kavanaugh um, nomination. So that is some of your things that are happening there and around the state. But let's talk about some of the things that are happening on MCAT. So here are some of the new programs on MCAT. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about a bunch of crappy movies that are coming out this weekend. And, and I was being pulled back, and everything looked like in a... Uh, Hitchcock movie where like they zoom in but pan back or whatever and um, and I felt like I was being crushed and it was very scary I was terrified I think I was probably shaking I'm not sure how long that lasted but luckily my dog was sitting on the couch next to me and we looked at each other and he kind of talked me through it and <laughs> and he did and it was helpful and one of the things I realized was that I needed to face my, my fear. And so I did that, and I came out the other side of this feeling. And I pulled out of that, and, um, and all of a sudden, um, things were re really amazing. So as a second grader, I was obsessed with the Titanic, <laughs> tree frogs, and most of all, babies. So when I found a book at the library with a newborn baby on the cover and the title, All About Babies, forget about it. <laughs> that night, my mom sat down next to me with my library book in her lap, and I thought for one second, we're getting a baby. <laughs> not the case. No. We would not be getting a baby because for that to happen, my parents would have to do this thing. <laughs> On page 42, <laughs> I would not be getting a baby ever because I would not be doing the thing. <laughs> On page 42. <laughs> My mom said she hadn't planned on talking to me about sex yet, but obviously I was curious. Said, the more I think of it, I find this conclusion more impressed upon me, that the greatest thing a human soul ever does is to see something and tell what it saw in a plain way. Hundreds of people can talk for one who can think, but thousands can think for one who can see. And so how do you learn to see? You learn from the masters. Tolstoy. Tolstoy had this great scene in Anna Karenina where he's got a 17-year-old girl putting on a velvet choker, doing her hair, putting on her dress, and feeling just incredibly beautiful. I don't know how middle-aged Tolstoy understood what it feels like, but he had the ability to see and observe and to describe it in a, thir in a straightforward way. I tell all my students to read George Orwell and C.S. Lewis. These are both two mid-century English writers who wrote for radio. They wrote for clarity for their, to be heard, not to be read. And that's describing something in the clearest possible way. No one knows how to act better with another actor than that being Tom Hardy and Tom Hardy. Uh, coming up this weekend, we got a whole uh, mess of movies. Another uh, cash grab Marvel comic book movie buddy comedy kind of deal um, in the form of, of Venom. So let's get our symbiote on. Symbiote, sorry. I have to repronounce it because apparently that's canon. From the Spider-Man movies minus the Spider-Man comes Venom. It's about a boy and his symbiote 
uh, trying to figure out what it's like to live in a live action comic book movie in the body of Eddie Brock and they fight crime or well, I guess or something or and trying to stay away from those wacky government contractors contractors bad government bad but government contractors no way so this journey requires acceptance of oneself and the persecution of others and coming out on top just kidding. This is about a cash grab of a PZ-13 comic book movie. Up next, we got another cash grab for some of you who not want to, who don't really want to watch the comic book movies, but who just want to fall in love. Uh, this nice little romantic um, um, dramedy. Uh, no drama. It's a it's a drama romance. So there's I don't think there's comedy in this, but Bradley Cooper uh, does his uh, 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 directorial debut in A Star Is Born, which also stars Lady Gaga. Uh, Join the forces in Bradley Cooper's movie about a country star at the end of his career began beginning a relationship with an up and coming star. It might be better if they would have cast an, another lady in the lead because you're kind of. Uh, playing it with a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy when it comes to Lady Gaga, who's already famous. I'm not saying that Lady Gaga isn't good for the part. I'm just saying, of course, it is just a movie. Moving on. The, up next, we have, um, speaking of white people, um, watch a movie about a young black girl who's forced into a spotlight when her boyfriend is killed by the police with a misunderstanding. Uh, she is thrust into a spotlight and must uh, speak for black lives without forgetting where she comes from and where she is going. Of course, you will get exactly what you expect from this movie, a reluctant hero on a path to save not only her community, but herself. <sighs> okay, I don't have another movie for you guys, but I do have a couple things I want to uh, mention as well. MCAT will be doing... Um, couple live streams today as well uh, out of the courthouse. If you're interested in uh, learning about some of those live streams, you can go to MCAT.org. Um, be sure, oh, that's my face again. Let's switch it to the website, MCAT.org. All you got to do is click on local live and you should be able to have access. I'm just going to mute it real quick. Oh, no. Doesn't seem to be showing up on our um, Safari page, which is good. Because this is all about trial and error. So if you go to MCAT.org, let's try going it, uh, going to uh, the Facebook page. I mean, not Facebook, jeez. So local live via uh, Google Chrome. And if you click on here, you should be able to have access to local live and be able to live stream some of the videos that are coming in through here. But, you know, we're having a little technical difficulties. Let's let you guys know at home. But we're going to hopefully be live streaming either via our local live or Facebook page pretty much um, all day um, today. And we'll we'll keep at it and we'll check it all out. But for right now, I'm um, <laughs> it's kind of like I have to be there to help, but I can't really be there because I'm right here. So let's uh, let's not talk about that. Let's forget all about that and let's uh, concentrate on some of the art stuff that's happening this week and this is an art clip from the gallery of the visual arts which is from the university of montana's uh, social science building they have a gallery in there and you can check this out and they're going to be wrapping up this gallery uh, by the end of today All right, so there's a little taste from the Gallery of the Visual Arts. If you're interested in checking all that out, you can go there yourself. It's great. It's wonderful. Uh, very uh, produced for our 
produced by our very own Rick Phillips. Um, let's talk about some of those art things that are happening this week. It is your art guide for First Friday. Kicking things off with the very first one today is Siliquis from the Radius Gallery. The Radius Gallery is located off of Main Street. Um, get an early start to your First Friday art walk and drop by the Radius Gallery fall exhibits. Siliquis, the show presents the works of five Montana-based artists who, whose voices we find strikingly uh, singular, spirited, and beautiful. Andy Klein, Monty Dolok, Lindsay Myers Carroll, Sue Turrell, and James Todd will be uh, um, featured tonight as well. Next, we got Nancy Erickson's stuff. Um, Cat, Wild, and Mild. Gallery 709 inside the art, uh, Montana Art and Framing. You go to montanaart.com for, for more information. New links and polar bears, as well as cats in drawings, paintings, and fabric art for the last 50 years. And this will be happening all of October. Also, hey guys, uh, who doesn't like uh, Woody Woody Harrelson? No, no, just kidding. The uh, the red haired stranger is uh, at the artist shop at 5 p.m. Oils acrylics in India ink. Uh, they've always uh, Richard Rich Lang uh, Land will, has always depicted things that he's fond of. For the musicians have always been the magicians. Um, and that's happening from October 1st through the 31st, all of the month of October. Next, we got another art walk. This is from the Janet Rankin Peace Center. This is the First Friday Nation Cree Spirit Art Show. Um, enjoy First Friday artist Ed Baker. Um, First Nation Cree artist drawings. They also sipping free beer, local popcorn, and treats in fair trade shopping at the Olive Branch Trade Store. Up next, we got uh, Woodwork, and this is uh, Bad Goat Wood Products, and this is uh, the new gallery at the Bad Goat Workshop, located at the north side of the Scott Street Bridge, uh, finely crafted furniture, home items, and unique wood creations. Another one is Cletus. Cletus is going to be at Bernice's Bakery. Uh, get a couple pastries, get a cupcake, enjoy some um, Cletus by David Miles Lusk, and it's on the relief print focuses on rare and endangered ocean mammals. You gotta go check it out. Uh, hold on a second. There we go. <laughs> I, I apparently have to click it just the way uh, the TriCaster likes it. But uh, he, BT Liver, Livermore, uh, this is uh, an art installation. It's a noteworthy pr paper and press at 8 p.m. Um, BT Livermore is a sign painter, screen printer, woodworker, and all around maker of. Uh, things living in Butte, Montana. He is fueled by, mainly by coffee and uh, quality hugs. His work is inspired by vintage uh, signage and advertising, usually with a positive or humorous message. Um, alongside his personal work, uh, BP manages to uh, manages the community printmaking studio in M Imagine Butte Resource Center. And he's also working on create a new makerspace, the Phoenix Fabrication Studio, opening in 2019. So check that out. It's a little bit of taste of Butte art. Next, we got Marlo Crossofiso. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. And this is going to be at the Downtown Dance Collective. Um, born and raised in Helena, Montana, Marlo received her BA in Fine Arts at the University of Montana in 2006 with a main focus in studio art, photography, and ceramics. During the time at the university, she, she participated in one year study abroad in Malta. I, I'm pretty sure it's not Malta, Montana, at the University of Malta, where she studied art history and of various studies like printmaking and etching. And this is going to be at the Downtown Dance Collective. And MAM, you can't forget about the MAM. The MAM is having all sorts of things. Experience MAM engaging exhibits for free at the first Friday each month from 5 to 8 p.m. Live music by KGBA, a no-host bar, and a unique art viewing experience. Enjoy the large-scale outdoor sculptures of billing artist Phoebe Knapp at the Art Park before it closes for the season. The Art Park is usually open for the summer season, but as soon as, uh, you know, like towards the end in the fall and the uh, winter starts rearing its old head again, um, they start taking down a lot of the outside Art Park stuff as well. So October's first Friday will be followed by the Wayne Hovitz Trio Concerts. Uh, special thanks to Missoulian for decades of support for the First Friday at the Man. Um, first Friday, collage by August, Christy, Christian, and Pi. And um, this is going to be at the Lake Missoula Tea Company. Sculptor and uh, collage maker August Christine is returning to Lake Missoula Tea Company with a new year, new this year's new work. Uh, every time I say new and year together, I always say new years, no matter what order. Um, his art is highly de detailed with rich 
uh, rich with story. They're excited to see what has uh, been making. Little house pies will have hand uh, made and delicious tea infused pie slices for sale as well. Um, and also uh, happening, we got two more. Stay with me. Uh, reception Wood Fired in Missoula. This is at the Clay Studio of Missoula. The Clay Studio of Missoula is proud to present Wood Fired in Missoula. This is a juried and invitational exhibit featuring the works by Fired in the Clay Studio of Missoula, Wood Kilns from 2007 to 2018. This is uh, basically Montana made art that had a international tour. Uh, this exhibit is being held in conjunction with activity center around the cultural uh, confluence wood fire international event in Helena, Montana and firing with a special guest of the wood kiln since October. Woodville. And final, final, but this is a big deal. Hey, you guys been wondering about uh, all the art boxes, uh, all the uh, traffic signal boxes that have been painted outside right next to uh, your uh, street lights when you get caught in that red light, you'd be like, what are they doing? Why is the re why is the light red? Come on, turn faster! Oh look, there's art. See, that's what they're doing. They're doing an, a, tra a traffic signal box, um, a, a grand premiere. Um, every year they have uh, four to five artists. This year they have five artists that uh, came together and made it. It's Hannah Schultz, Karen Sh uh, Schlobed, Scott Miller, Lillian Nelson, and Greg Simple. This. Uh, Dedication is to honor the artists. They have uh, completed their boxes, and it can be on the lookout for the downtown boxes, especially the one off of, um, I think, the one that's in the direct middle, right? I can't, like, it's just right over, because the one that's purple right here is right next to Stockton Bank, and the one right next to it is uh, basically Orange and Spruce Street. You can check all those out, but, of course, you can go to the uh, public art committee, uh, the ci.missoula.mt.us to learn more information about this. And of course, you can always watch my documentary, Tra uh, Missoula Traffic Signal Boxes. It's a mouthful, but if you look that up, you'll be able to find a nice little documentary about two years ago, <laughs> uh, but it was premiered last year. So you can check all that out and more. All right. What else do I need to tell you guys? Uh, not much going on. Um, events are happening this weekend, and I want to have another uh, shout-out to the Zootown Arts Community Center, which will be doing their uh, monster project. We'll be wrapping up this weekend. All right, so that was pretty much most of the art clips I'll be showing you guys. I'll have uh, I I will I'll, I'll throw one in there for that will be ending in December a little bit later. But let's talk uh, what's happening. I I just want to give you an update. Uh, um, we're live streaming. We're not live streaming on our um, MCAT dot uh, org page, but we are streaming on our Facebook page. You go to Missoula Community uh, Missoula Missoula's Community Media Resource on Facebook to find all our live streaming things that are happening tonight. And today, so pretty much all day today, we'll be live streaming from our Facebook page. I just heard from our live streamer, Ron, who is on the scene right now doing some live stream stuff. How about a shout out, Ron? No, I'm not really talking to anyone. I'm just talking to myself. All right, let's talk about some events that are happening. <laughs> I'm such a turd. All right, let's talk about some things that are happening this morning. Tiny Tales and Storytime at the Missoula Public Library. Pick. Um, 
starting at 10.30 a.m. this morning, um, Tiny Tales and Storytime are uh, a great way for your kids to get engaged with learning and reading. Spectrum Discovery Center is doing astronomy, and they're going to be talking about their new exhibit there as well. Um, it all starts at 11 a.m. when they open. Uh, yarns and watercolor painting is going to be at the Missoula Public Library starting at uh, noon today. So you want to learn to stitch, make your own clothes, or you just want to draw and do some watercolor. It all starts from noon to 1 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. Cribbage and Bridge, Missoula Senior Center's best dance floor in Missoula, is the best place to go around 12.30 today. If you're going to get lunch, why not play a couple games with a couple friends from the Missoula Senior Center? Cribbage and Bridge, all at the Missoula Senior Center starting around 12.30. Montana Film Festival. This afternoon at 2 p.m. If you're watching the, this, if you're watching my replay this afternoon, at, right now or 2 p.m. in the future, future Scott, you got this. Um, Roxy Theater is doing the Montana Film Festival all weekend long, uh, which will uh, uh, culminate in uh, Mandy, which will happen on Saturday night. Mandy is a movie with Nicolas Cage, and yes, it's exactly what you think it is. Uh, Endeavor um, is a uh, as I like to call it, it's PTA minus the T. Um, a bunch of parents got together with their homeschool kids, and they made their own school called Endeavor. They're having a uh, Legos and Games all starting at 2.30 this afternoon. Predator Feet at the Missoula Insectarium. You go to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org for more information about all their events and um, fun activities. And also they have dinner nights for people who want to eat bugs. So you can always look out for that as well in the future. Uh, today they're doing a predator feeding and they're looking for uh, hungry predators. 4 p.m. every Friday. Join us as they explain and demonstrate how they capture and consume their prey. Come see who's hungry today. Family Friendly Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, it's uh, it can be at the Top Hat. Broadway Beat at MCT. Um, so if you guys are checking out all the First Friday stuff and you want to enjoy some performances of the best of Broadway, best of musicals, Broadway Beat will be at the MCT tonight and also on Saturday at 3 and 5 p.m. I'll talk a little bit more about it as well. The beauty of Revenues is every song in the show is considered the best song from its show of origin. In the classic musical theater realm, Broadway Beat will feature songs like 76 trombones from the music band and I whistle a happy tune from The King and I while popular new melodies like Season of Love and from Rent and For Good from Wicked will also be featured. Summer and Smoke at University of Montana set in Mississippi. It's going to be a play which will be playing this weekend and next weekend only at the University of Montana Theater. Um, Set in Mississippi at the start of the 20th century, uh, the subtle and tender drama from one of America's greatest playwrights follows the year-long connection between a timid minister's daughter and a charismatic, do and a char charismatic doctor's son who grew up next door to each other. Its themes and the struggles between the spiritual and the physical, loneliness and longing make summer and smoke a heartfelt um, meditation on romance inner, uh, inner spread with in uh, excessive humor stemming from Tennessee Williams' observation about conforming to and rebelling against small town life. And that's going to be happening tonight at 7.30 p.m., uh, October 3rd through the 7th, uh, 10th through the 13th, and then they have their uh, matinees on the 7th and the 14th, which is Sunday at 2 p.m. All right, that pretty much does it for your um, Friday. Um, there's a lot going on Friday because it is first Friday too, but I do want to throw it to another art clip for you guys just before I um, ha uh, wrap up with uh, Saturday events because it's homecoming. And it's gonna be it's an, it's gonna be a big chug chunk of of the show for sure. So um, right after this, I'll talk about Saturday. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some Saturday events. What's going on Saturday? Well, let me tell you, Farmer's Market is still going strong on Saturday, but also they're having a rabbit show. Hey, who doesn't like rabbits um, of mice and men? Um, Missoula Fairgrounds is hosting a rabbit show from 8 a.m. Um, they're going to do Northwestern Montana Rabbit, rabbit Enthusiasts, uh, NMRE, which is an organization, Fall Open Rabbit and Cavi on Saturday, October 6th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. the Missoula County Fairgrounds. Uh, now, I guess it's more of the Missoula uh, Fairgrounds than county. Uh, on the covered patio and lawn outside the Fine Arts Photography Building. Um, yeah, there are all sorts of fun things. It's going to be a $4 entry fee, just so you guys know. CPR and First Aid, if you want to learn some CPR and First Aid, Dick Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center is the place to be to learn all your CPA and First Aid certification. And they are a certifying um, a teaching organization so it's a good way to get uh, certified or recertified. Homecoming Parade starts at 10 a.m. MCAT will be live streaming it, uh, most likely from our Facebook page. Um, and then, of course, our replay will happen on our channel Monday. Um, they have marathons. Um, they have usually a uh, homecoming day type marathon, 5K type deal, kicking off at 9.30 a.m. as well. You want to look for that uh, to check all that out. Uh, Grizz football is starting at 2 p.m. Washington Grizzly uh, football team will be taking on Portland State. So kick, uh, kickoff is at 2 p.m. But if you are interested in dropping off your kids, MCAT does a Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 p.m. every Saturday for only $10. And if a kid wants to do a half day, it's $5. It's great. Kids get to do creative things, stop animation, live action, short films, and they get to learn a little editing along the way. Family Clay Workshop. Hey, there's other things happening in Missoula as well. You don't have to have your kid uh, do uh, stop animation. They can also do some clay with the Clay Studio of Missoula starting at 2 p.m. Family Workshops at the Clay Studio of Missoula. You can create something special with your loved ones. Their affordable family workshops are perfect for weekend activities for adults and student and, and children to do together. And this is uh, Saturday, October uh, 6th. From 2 to 5 p.m., they're going to have one in November 3rd, so it's th basically it's the first, sar first Saturday of the month. Uh, it's $35 for adult and one child. Individual clay glazing and firing additional adults and children are welcome per family for $15 per individual. Uh, Broadway Beat, like I said, um, on fr uh, Friday, tonight, uh, it's going to be uh, 7.30 p.m., but tomorrow it's going to be 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. at MCT. Hellgate Roller Derby. Hey, they're still doing some bouts, and check out the Western Montana Fairgrounds. Hey, you you went to you went to go see some bunnies. Now let's go see some um, women uh, beat each other up in uh, the home season eight of the Hellgate Roller Derby. This is bout four, and the main event begins at 7 p.m. But the doors open at 5 p.m. Uh, with the Missoula Juniors team, the Hellgate Hellions, taking on the Cherry Bomb Brawlers B team from Spokane, Washington. Ten dollars. Tickets are available online or at the door. Students and seniors are $8, and kids under 12 are getting free. Oof. I'm struggling with this, like the basic words. Uh, all sorts of homecoming type events are happening in Missoula, along with a bunch of films outside the Roxy via Montana Film Festival. So those are, come of your, those are a bunch of your events that are happening. Whew. A lot of things happening this weekend as well. Um, MCAT will be live streaming the uh, football game tonight as well. So you can check all that out by going to MCAT's Facebook page, but if you want to learn more information about my show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to made you write it out twice. If you're interested in following up on any of the videos that I've made, dubbing stuff, uh, our Saturday drop-in videos, past episodes, interviews, a uh, couple vlog stuff, or you want to learn about the Van Buren Interchange Project, it's a great resource for you guys. But also, MCAT.org. Boom. Go to MCAT.org. And you get this wonderful website. Well, if you go to MCAT.org, you'll automatically know exactly how to get to our Facebook page because we usually get a pop-up for Facebook, which I guess we don't. But, of course, here is uh, High School Sports, a uh, nice little uh, taste of um, what we've been doing this last year. We were doing um, football and we're doing volleyball, but tonight we're going to be doing football. Um, I believe it's Sentinel High School. Uh, going against uh, uh, Billings team, and you can check all that out all starting at 7 p.m. via our Facebook page, Missoula's Community Media Resource. I think that's enough of of plugging for MCAT. I think I'm going to end it right here. I want to thank you guys for joining me. It's First Friday. Go out and enjoy some art. Um, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Have a good weekend. Mm -hmm.